the college football experience, Syracuse orange men, 2022 college football season preview episode on the sports gambling podcast networks presented by win bet bet a hundred dollars at win bet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet that sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by IP vanish. Yes. IP vanish is the official VPN of the SGPN. Uh, and they're offering 70% off. If you go to IP vanish.com slash SGP, that's IP vanish.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by draft day 2.0. Yes. Make sure to check out draft day 2.0 starting on August 9th at noon Pacific Ryan, real money Kramer from the sports gambling podcast will begin drafting for 24 straight hours. That's the fantasy football marathon. I'm telling you that thing is fantastic. And real money will rate that this, this old fantasy football marathon will raise money for Daryl, a loyal listener who, uh, who was injured in a, uh, in a motorcycle accident. So head over to sports gambling podcast.com slash draft day for more details and draft day 2.0 August 9th noon Pacific. All right, folks. Hey, what's up? You degenerate gamblers. This is bill Burr. And you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, baby. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome. Welcome to the college football experience, Syracuse Orange Men 2022 season preview episode. My name is Kobe Swinging Database Dan, aka Pick Dundee. That's not a pick, this is a pick. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I smoke and I drink and um, I don't have stress and I'm healthy. <laughs> Could this be a sleeper team? We are talking Orangeman football. I am joined by my co-host. Give it up for former, former JMU Duke defensive back, the burrito eating, sideline kiss stealing, wheeling and dealing, Patty C in the place to be. Hi, up. This is a wild one. Yeah. This is a wild one because the Q's, the Q's, look, they're a strange team over the past couple of years. I think this fits. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. <laughs> that even might be a little little bit generous for the most part. I would beg to differ. I would beg to differ because I mean I feel like each and every year, Patty C. Let me just try to quickly uh dive into some stuff here. I'm just talking out of my arse right now a little bit, but um, uh, what? let's go 17. Let's start at 17. I feel like this team always gives Clemson a hard time. Let me see. They beat, way. they beat Clemson in 17, 27, 24, right? Mm-hmm. In 18, what'd they do? 18. They lost 27, 23, right? Yeah. 19. Uh, as the internet is going slower, though they got they got worked in nineteen forty one to six. <laughs> they um, worked in twenty as well. But then again, last year missed a field goal that would have sent the game to overtime. Yeah. So three of their last five games against Clemson decided by, uh, well they won one of them and the other two they lost by uh, six points, to four points or less. Yeah. So unbelievable, unfucking believable. But it's a big year because Dino Babers, we know he's on the hot seat. And Patty C, you gotta think like. Well, first off, let's just start Syracuse football overall. Uh, you this know. is a the, a program that was really fucking good. ESPN just did an article about uh, teams in the Northeast and what happened to college football in the Northeast. Syracuse was dominant in the fifties and sixties. Yeah. It was ranked, I want to say, it, it, twelve times in the top twenty-five from from uh, nineteen eighty to two thousand. Uh, if that maybe it was maybe it was 85 to 2005. I don't remember exactly, but I mean, they were, they were excellent. I mean, they had players too. Obviously Ernie, yeah. Ernie Davis, 
Ernie Jim Dan- Brown, Larry Zonka, yeah, uh, that was running jo- back. Joe Morris, wow. who was nasty for the Giants in the eighties. I mean, yeah. you go. That's a, a Donovan McNabb, Marvin Harrison, Art Monk, Quadre Ishmael. You go on and on yeah. and on. Dwight Freeney. You go. They just. Players. What happened? And and can they get back to this level? Because I think they with NIL, Syracuse is a very rich institution. If they just threw their money in there, I get it. It's a small city, but I just think they have. But just, you are essentially the flagship school for the state of New York. You know what they got to do, and I've been saying this for a long time. They got to get rid of the dome. Yeah. For football. Obviously. I mean, like that was like the fact that college football went from uh, like they used to play a lot more locally and now they have, they're in a, a, a conference with what Florida and they're getting rid of divisions next year. So what Miami, Florida, Georgia tech, Clemson, North Carolina, NC state, Duke, wake forest. Yeah. That that's eight right there. Eight of your fourteen teams don't see snow yeah. very often. Let alone, I, I would even say Virginia, Virginia Tech. You could make the case, yeah, uh, or Louisville or something. But I mean, um, I would say certainly the Carolinas. But uh, really, the Florida schools are at a tremendous disadvantage when they come up to uh, play. That's what, they're not playing to their best hand. Their best hand would be. It's like wh- why is uh, why is it tough to go win at Iowa? Why is it tough right. to uh, you know we see the Pac twelve. USC's got their ass kicked at Utah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. anytime you have these elements where you got to play into that hand. Yeah. I play. think you get rid of the dome. That shit's been there since like 1978 or something or 79. Get rid of that. Get an outdoor stadium, yeah. which they probably won't do because they said the fans, but let's be honest, the fans will come if you win. They could follow that in any sport. Well, and you think about the identity of the the teams up north, you know, you got your Wisconsin's, you got your Iowa's, you got your Michigan's, you got your traditionally Ohio States. They've started to throw the ball around a little more, but that's, that's running the ball football. And that's why you had, you know, the, the stud backs that you used to have. And now, I mean, I, I guess you can't really say that because uh, Sean Tucker is a beast had yes. a hell of a year in a dome last Buffalo year. Buffalo bills. Perfect example. They're, yeah. they're upstate New York. They, they, they play outdoors. Same with the Buffalo bulls. Now the uh, back when the NFC Central used to have the Buccaneers, right? The Buccaneers before the you know the, they expanded and everything and changed divisions. The NFL, the Buccaneers had this record where they could they never won in cold weather at Chicago and at Green Bay. Like yeah. it was like thirty years long. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there is something to it if they play to that advantage. I think that's how they can get their football program back on track. I know that's that's still a lot of money, but look, the stadium's old as shit anyway. Yeah. So you might as well get rid of it. I mean, it yeah. had been, you know, when they opened it, like 1980 That's or what I'm so. saying. I think 79 or 80. It yeah. had been something really cool, but now it's 40 years old, which is ancient for a dome. But the, back and then it, they were playing Northeast teams. So the advantage was, was neutral. Like yeah. now that you're playing this many other teams, you got to use your weather to your, your advantage. Right. You know what I mean? You Like it's, it's, I don't understand. Like Wisconsin plays outdoors, Minnesota golden Gophers play outdoors. Like I said, Buffalo Bulls, Buffalo Bills, Green Bay Packers. They they all. What do they all say? Oh, can can uh, can Patrick Mahomes? Win, or not even Mahomes, but you could say like, well, can Tom Brady can they go up and win in Lambo when he right. was with the Bucks? I mean, stuff what, like that. Miami had to play against uh, Wisconsin in the uh, Pinstripe Bowl and went up there and lost thirty-eight nothing. Yeah, and those are supposed to be two evenly matched teams. I'm telling you, they, right. like they they really they need to call Dundee. They need to call Dundee. I got a plan here. <laughs> what do you make of uh, Dino Babers though? Cause it is a pivotal year. He's 27 and 43 in six years. Patty C it, when, it, we're, we're going to be doing this. We do this every year on the college football experience it, subscribe. And hopefully you're subscribed on YouTube because you can watch this thing with this sweet graphics behind us and also subscribe to the college basketball experience. Cause we talk college hoops year round. We've been doing that for years as well. Jim, ba- Jim Bayheim, one of the the last of the originals. So, oh man, I'm excited to watch All s- time some great. cues, some cues basketball this year. And Bayheim, one of the greatest uh, overachievers in For terms sure. of a hot wife. Uh, <laughs> oh, I uh, thought you're gonna. No, I mean, as a coach too, <laughs> yes, sure. Yes, but yes. Jim Bayheim looks like he fell off the ugly tree <laughs> and hit every branch along the way. But his <laughs> wife is pretty smoking. Let's be honest. Coming at Jimmy Bayheim, this uh, is he's like, a good you, guy. You though. don't want to piss off the Syracuse fans, and that's a great way to piss them off. <laughs> uh, but look. Do you know Babers? 29 and 43 in six years, Patty C. A year from now, will he be when we're doing our preview next year for 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 Syracuse, will he be the head coach? I, I guess will. I should ask you this at the end. 
I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Really? I'm gonna say yes. It's. I mean, I. I think going bowling this year is so important. I mean, to ask you about him, his two years at Eastern Illinois, very impressive. Two years of Bowling Green, very impressive. And really, that third year at Syracuse when he went ten and three, like you say, they should build him a statue for that. Finished number fifteen in the nation. But you know, even if you take out that one in ten COVID year, it's four losing seasons and at a five still last year, man, look, three point loss. Look at this, the 10 point loss to Rutgers. That game is tough. They should have won that one. T- uh, three point loss at Florida state, three point loss in overtime to wake Forest, who won the Atlantic three point loss to, to Clemson on a missed field goal. I mean, this team was almost, you can make a case. They were almost eight or nine win team at the beginning of the year. They were definitely a different team. You're right. That Rutgers game was a total coin flip through. I feel like three and a half quarters. Um, and then the close losses against some pretty darn good teams, Wake and Clemson. Um, that almost suggests that because both of those games were at home, that the dome still does have an advantage. And we, I mean, let's be honest, Syracuse, we've said it for a long time, um, has one of those dome environments that tends to be an advantage, you know, but we just think that going outside might be a bigger advantage. No, it'd be a much bigger advantage. I mean, uh, the, you see it all the time. I mean, it, so many different uh, examples I could use, but I'm looking back at that, that Rutgers Syracuse game, Patty C. I mean, if you're getting like Marvin Harrison, uh, then the dome is good. If you're not getting that guy, then it has less of an advantage. Rutgers won that game with 195 total yards of offense. So Syracuse severely outgained Rutgers. Yeah. I feel like that game was like seven to seven until I think there was a defensive turnover. I want to say DeVito the- threw a pick or something. Yeah. Very entertaining, but, but what do you, what, I mean, they did get stomped toward the end of the year though. That's true. The wheels fell off. That is true. But yep. I think I, they might've done a sneaky hire. Let's get to it. Uh, Cause Dino Babers, if he's, if this is his final year, he is going out guns a blazing Patty Z because he went out and hired Robert Anai, the offensive coordinator from the Virginia Cavaliers, uh, a man I am quite familiar with, as you can tell by my hat. What were their offense last year? I shouldn't even. I didn't pull up the numbers on that, but that was a top ten offense. Uh, yeah, let me. Uh, and 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 Brendan Armstrong missed a game, so they probably would have been like a top five offense. That offense was incredible down there. They were the last number twenty one scoring offense in the country, Virginia. 30, 31. 34.6 points per game in terms of total offense. Let me pull that up. Uh, the number three total offense in the country mm. from a yardage standpoint. So that's a nice thing to inherit. Uh, yeah. That coordinator. Yeah. Uh, I think, and, and I think if you, tr- if you look at his history, Brandon Armstrong was a converted safety. He was a safety in high school, uh, out of Ohio, uh, I believe. Oh, uh, uh, Brandon Armstrong. Yeah. 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 And if you look at Bryce Perkins, what he had before, uh, he was an athlete, yep. I think a transfer from Arizona state. And then obviously the big one, the saints player, uh, Taysom Hill, Taysom Hill. Yeah. I think the reason why I touched on that is because Garrett Schrader is the quarterback of Syracuse. He played wide receiver at Mississippi state just, yeah. just the year before. Uh, I understand. Look, these are Syracuse's offensive numbers last year. 91st in scoring offense, 16th in rush offense, 121st in pass offense, 94th in total offense. I expect an eye to get really creative with this run game with Schrader. And then obviously Sean Tucker, the star back is back and he's, he's legit. Um, they're bringing back four or five offensive linemen led by Matthew Ber- Bergeron. Uh, two or three wideouts are back. Anthony Queeley, Courtney Jackson. Look, I think an eye can have success with this offense. I really do. He's going to need to do something to punch up that passing. But the fact that Brennan Armstrong was slinging for 500 some odd yards and yeah, I don't know if an eye turned a corner from a coaching standpoint, but it does seem like over the past couple of years, the, the Brennan Armstrong as a prospect wasn't particularly like, you know, I touted. Uh, and he just, he, he took his athleticism and it's the same thing he did with Bryce Perkins. He's just able to use an athlete to threaten the defense, you know, with his legs. I mean, let, let's, let's review some of the uh, stats. These guys have put up. Um, I'll go back to uh, Bryce Perkins, his final season. He was good for 3,500 passing yards and uh, nearly 800 rushing yards the year before that 2,600, 900. Um, and then, so Brennan Armstrong last year, uh, 4,400, uh, passing yards and, uh, 251 rushing yards. But the year before that 
twenty one hundred and five fifty two. So I'm thinking. And then should I hit uh, Taysom Hill too? Well, I, I want to add it also that Garrett Schrader, his freshman year at Mississippi State, he was quarterback. His his sophomore year was wide receiver. Yeah. His freshman year, he split time with Tommy Stevens, starting a lot of games, but he did go. Uh, he was, he was 88 of 153 for 58% of his passes for just about 1200 yards, eight touchdowns, five picks. And he also ran for 600 yards. So he actually has been doing this for, I mean, a couple of times. I He's think shown in he an eye system. I think it might be, might be efficient, man. Yeah. Real quick to touch on. I mean, Taysom Hill, similar 2,300 yards, 600 pa- uh, rushing yards in his senior year. So the only difference I guess is Schrader's 1400 passing yards. If he can get them where the other guys are and tack another thousand or 2000, or in the case of Brennan Armstrong, 3000, I think that's a stretch, but even if he gets them up to like 2,500 or 3000 passing yards, yeah, then that offense becomes really explosive with Sean Tucker there. Yeah. They're breaking in a new fullback because they do have a fullback. Uh, yeah, buddy. And Chris Elmore, I'm telling you, I, I find them almost must watch TV. When I was doing this prep, I was like, you know, maybe I'm underselling them and maybe they're must watch TV now because of that. Anai I high, higher defensively, Patty see the defense has been pretty solid. They were 66th, 66th in scoring defense a season ago, 26 in rush defense, 26 in pass defense charting at the 19th best defense in the nation yardage wise or total wise. Um, I mean, if I, if I had told you this before today, Hey, you know, Syracuse was the top 20 defensive team a year ago. You would say, been stunned. You would say, go to hell, right? Yeah. Get out of here. Right. Uh, they got zero starters back on the defensive line. Something to circle there. But besides that they return everybody. Yes. All their linebackers led by Michael Jones, uh, all their secondary led by cornerback deuce chestnut and their kicker and punter. And their kicker has been pretty money with the exception of that miss in the Clemson game. Um, that all bodes well. If the defensive line can just be a little bit decent here, yeah, I think this team might be better than what we are thinking. We're I know, I know. On our, our episode this past Wednesday, NC Nick saying he said Syracuse is getting some hype, and I was like, well, "Are they?" I never heard that. But then he he was saying we should hammer the under, and I was sitting there saying, "Yeah, I think you're right. We should hammer the under." But I got to be that honest, was without doing much research, <clears throat> that's what on I'm it. saying. When yeah. I'm diving into this. And and the Anai hire is so huge. I think they could be pretty good. They were the 93rd offense in the country last year total and up to number three with an eye. I mean, obviously they're not going to jump that high. I think it would take several years for him to like get to that level, but Virginia doesn't have a ton more talent than Syracuse. If really at all, you know, and um, I'm with you. I think that, you know, if, if you can maintain anywhere that level of top 20 defense and then you can get even into the top 30, 50 of offense. There's a lot of games that you, you could win, you know, especially if you have a good kicking game to win you some close games. I think we got to be pay a little more attention to so, old Q's here. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Uh, look, we're going to get to the transfer portal and, and recruiting rankings and, and what Las Vegas expects. I know you can see the graphic here on, on uh, YouTube. If you're watching, like I said, subscribe to the college experience on YouTube. Um, but uh First, I got to get us paid. All right. And I want to tell you folks out there that the college football experience Syracuse preview for 2022 is brought to you by WinBet. Bet a hundred dollars at WinBet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by IP vanish. Yes. IP vanish is the official VPN of SGPN and they're offering 70% off. If you go to IP vanish.com slash SGP, that's IP vanish.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by draft day 2.0. Yes. Make sure to check out draft day 2.0 starting uh, August 9th at noon Pacific Ryan real money Kramer from the sports gambling podcast. will begin drafting for 24 straight hours. It's a fantasy football marathon. And guess what? It's a fantasy football marathon that's raising money for Daryl. Yes, one of our one of our loyal listeners who was injured in a in a, in a motorcycle accident. So we're trying to get some money for Daryl to help him out. Uh, best wishes to Daryl. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash draft day for more details. Uh, we're also brought to you by Odds Trader. Odds Trader. Uh, you're probably wondering what is Odds Trader. Well, it's a place to compare to compare odds from all the major sports books out there, right? You can also compare the different signup codes and promotions from sportsbook to sportsbook to get the best deal. 
The app also provides player statistics, game stats, injury reports, projected game day weather. Hello. Even the app is saying you should get, get rid of the dome, right? For betters to make the most informed bets possible. It also has a bet tracker. So betters can, can keep re- you know, records from all their games and their betting activity. Go to oddstrader.com slash blue wire. That's odds trader. The number one site for all your game day bets, Patty C I'll bet you this. It, I, there's no way to prove this, but if the Pats played in the dome, the Patriots, they wouldn't have won many of those super bowls. I agree completely. Yes. Uh, that's, they, that's a team that long benefited from the, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I agree too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember I mean, the, the, what was it? The 79 AFC championship where the uh, was, what's what, what year was that when the Oilers had to come up there? Oh, uh, I think they had to go up there a bunch of times in the seventies, uh, but one of them was AFC championship was in the was snow. It, yeah. They couldn't handle well, that. I mean, the NFL dome teams now, now a third of the leagues in a dome now. So it's changing, but forever they couldn't win. You know, they couldn't win when it counted in the playoffs. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, use that to your advantage. Exactly. All right, we are back talking Q's football and uh, the transfer portal. I actually think they did a decent job. I'm going to hit on some of this, Patty. See, quarterback incoming here. Carlos Del Rio Wilson comes in from Florida with the Gators. See, him penciled in as their, their second string quarterback. Maybe he's got some wheels, too. Uh, they also brought in Dan Valari from the Michigan Wolverines, a quarterback. So, two, so it's quarterback depth because Tommy DeVito went out, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, they also brought in Demarcus Adams from the airport, Florida international at wideout. I like that get, and I like at wide receiver. They also got CJ Hayes from Michigan state, giving them some receiving depth. I think that's important. And then my personal favorite one is they went out and got running back Jawan price from New Mexico state. Look, I watched way too much New Mexico state football last year. They were terrible, but this guy was their one like beacon of light. Beacon of hope, Patty C. Yeah. Uh, I like that get giving him some depth, and I think they could get creative with him because he's kind of got a little bit of like Metcalf to him. Okay. Not DK, Eric. Oh, wow. Uh, Bold statement. I don't know if that's the right comparison, but I'm just saying it's, it's, he's kind of, I feel like you could use him in a hybrid style. And that was, he was from um, New Mexico State. New Mexico State. Yeah. It's Juwan Price. I think that's, a, it's, it's a, tough to say, Hey, you're going to be maybe one of the greatest punt returners in NFL history. <laughs> no, I don't want to say that, but I just think if an eye can, can use him, uh, I think he could, could be efficient in, in the way that an eye has been creative in, in years past with his offenses. Um, they also brought in cornerback Isaiah Johnson from Dartmouth and safety Braylon Oliver from Louisville. And then this one was big. Elijah Clark, cornerback Rutgers before his injury. He was, a, he was a key player on, on Rutgers. So I think that one's going to be big, giving them some depth on the defensive side of the ball. There you go. You're right. Juwan price, uh, kind of versatile there. 692 rushing yards, 173 receiving yards on 26 catches and pretty decent kick returner. In fact, that's what I'm saying. This guy, he reminded me a little bit of like a Glenn Milburn esque. you yeah. know what I mean? Or get some explosion. It's a nice well, guy to be able to mix into your, uh, that's what I'm saying. I mean, Sean get Tucker jet sweeps going. I would, I would get him in and get him in the mix. There you go. Sean Tucker apparently been running track with the uh, Syracuse track team. So speed there at the running back, but he's more of an every down back. Be, I, I agree. You throw the the speedster, Juwan Price in with the jet sweeps, all of a sudden. And you're running Schrader. I'm all telling of you. a sudden you got a really fast team on that turf. Yeah. You can start to get back to that uh that that idea of putting your team on turf. Turf tough. Turf all right. tough. Uh talk to me about recruiting, buddy. Well, they suck. Oh, uh, oh, oh wait, 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 wait. I guess I didn't talk about what they lost. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm ahead. sorry. Hold on, hang on. They lost linebacker Malik Matthew to the portal. They lost uh Quarterback, quarterback Dylan Markowitz to Texas State, safety Ben Labrosse to the portal, uh, cornerback Chase Atkinson's to the portal, wide receiver Landon Morris to the Utah Utes, um, wide receiver Sherrod Johnson to FIU. They traded wide receivers with the airport. Um, I'm sorry, I guess Demarcus Adams was from Florida Atlantic, and and Sherrod Johnson went to Florida International. I got my airports confused. Uh, <laughs> happens all the time. Uh, they lost Cooper Lutz to the Vanderbilt Commodores. Um, he was a running back for them. So uh, they also lost cornerback Adrian Cole to the airport. Uh, tight end Luke Benson went to Georgia tech. What are you doing? 
What are you doing going from Syracuse to Georgia Tech? Um, <laughs> defensive lineman Joe Rondi to the portal. At least it's cross division. True. Defensive lineman uh, Curtis Harper to the Akron Zips. Linebacker Jeff Canton Arku to the Memphis Tigers. Defensive end Laterry Kinsler to the airport, Florida International. <laughs> there was a raid at the airport. Uh, yeah. uh, quarterback Tommy DeVito to the Illinois uh, Fighting Illini. Wide receiver Taj Harris to Rutgers. Taj Harris was good. I, I think that was that one is that actually that hurts. Uh, running back Jarvion Howard to Alcorn State. Wide receiver Russell Thompson Bishop to the portal. Offensive lineman Cody Shear to the portal. And that's it. I still think they won the portal. 37th nationally, fifth within the conference. I'd say for Syracuse, that's a win. They won the portal. Talk yeah. to me about recruiting. I'm sorry. I know you said it was bad. Right? Uh, it's it's been bad and it's been getting a little worse. Uh, last five cycles, uh, 51, 56, 62, 64, 64. So within the conference, that's basically slid from around number 10 down to number 12 to 13. As a matter of fact, from a composite standpoint, standpoint last year, they were 70th. Uh, nationally and number 14 or dead last in the mm. ACC in terms of overall talent. I don't think that they're going to be much higher than that, but mm. the composition of the team and the uh, veteran elements of it, you know, especially on the back end of the defense, I think make up for a little bit of the lack of talent. Well, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see this win total here at five. All right. Shout out to the SGP and graphics team, but for the Syracuse orange five. And I'm seeing it at, I'm going online right now, looking at the unders at minus minus one forty, the overs at plus plus one twenty. So they'd be even leaning to a four and eight, five and seven season. Mm. The Las Vegas is Patty C blindly. They went five and seven a year ago. They had three games by three points or less. They lost. How many, how, uh, let me see though. They, they beat Liberty by three. So that was a three point win. They beat, Virginia Tech by five. They beat Boston College by five. Oh no, they beat Boston College by fifteen. So never mind. Only two close wins. So what? Two and four in games decided by ten points or less. Yeah. So maybe things break right and they uh, they get to that sixth win or seventh win this year. We'll see. Let's take a look at this schedule. Let's take a look. Uh, we're gonna go game by game on the schedule. And and week one starts out with look. We're doing this new segment which is the sling game. Most important game of the year, the sling game of the season. And look, it's college football season, which means you need the unbeatable coverage of sling TV starting at $35 a month. Sling has all the big games on the biggest channels like ESPN, ESPN two, ESPN three, sec network, ACC network, Fox, and the big 10 network all for the best price. You can stream on any device, record up to 50 hours with included DVR space uh, and pause or, or, or change your service at any time. Check out sling.com for special offers. Sling the live TV you love for a price you'll love. Try us today. Sling, Patty C. My sling game of the year. I know most of the times they come in the middle of the season or towards the end of the year. I think it's week one. Yeah, because I think I can build a case. I know that Robert and I just got there. How fast can they get this offense? Because they host the Louisville Cardinals in a conference game on Saturday, September third, on the ACC Network. Eight o'clock Eastern. Look, I'm high on Louisville, but I gotta be honest. The more prep I did on Syracuse, the more I said, "Hey, if their run defense was that good, if they stop and make Cunningham throw, beat you in the air, we could have." And then the home crowd element. I mean, when you think about that, I know you're higher on Louisville. I think a lot of the publications are thinking that Louisville is going to be close to the bottom of the ACC Atlantic. Um, then this is probably one of the games within the division that they are expected to have a, a better shot at winning, or at least closer to a 50, 50 shot against Louisville getting in them at home. Well, and it's just so important to me to start the season, right? Because I see this path. So let's just hear me out. I, I look, I already did the Louisville preview. I took Louisville. Yeah. But hear me out of, of, of if they win this game. Yeah. If they win this game, then they travel to Rensselaer field in week two to take on UConn. <laughs> I think they'll be, I they would, they would then that. be two and oh, yeah. then they host Purdue at the dome. Look, I took Purdue on the Purdue pod. Yeah. You would expect Purdue, to but get that. I could also see that being a game, right? The fact that it's in Syracuse. Is yes. Big. Yeah. Then they host Virginia. I think they can beat Virginia at home. Yeah. An eye is going to know the best way to limit Armstrong. 
That's right? very true. And then they get Wagner. So your first five games before your bye week, if you were to beat Louisville, I think you have a decent shot at being four and one or five and zero. Oh. That's true. And maybe seeing Garrett Schrader in practice every day helps you prepare for Malik Cunningham. Helps you prepare prepare for Brennan Armstrong. Well, and I I think it might even lean Louisville into having a hard time preparing for what this offense will look like uh, with Schrader. With Schrader in an eye. Yeah. You can go study the Brennan Armstrong tape. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I think if if he's got this offense, you know, rolling right off the top, then I don't know that Louisville is going to have. They're certainly not going to have any tape, you know, to to yeah. deal with it. You know, they're going to have to be going off a of UVA tape to prep for it. Uh, I got him. Realistically, I mean, I don't think it's far that far fetched to say five and zero, oh, right? But I think they're going to be three and two. But the fact those are home games, man. I think you're right. I think three and two is probably reasonable. But yeah. The what four of the first five games at home, and the only one that isn't is at UConn, who was the national champion a couple <laughs> years ago. But they've taken a step back. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, you're right. Five and zero is possible. It's here. very possible, and that would be your push, yes, right? And that there. would be your push. So look, they get a bye week, and then they host NC State. Patty C, do you know who NC State plays the week before? Who's that? The Clemson Tigers. Oh, so. I think it, they're it could either going to be heartbroken or what, they're going to be heartbroken or I think they're going to be gonna, partied out. Yes. <laughs> I'm taking this would be an upset special. Give me Syracuse to beat NC state Saturday, October 15th in the carrier dome or whatever the fuck you call that filthy dome. Cut that roof off already. All right, let's play some football. Wait, 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 no, no, no. I'm looking at NC. No, wait. NC state has Clemson, then Florida state, then Syracuse. I'm thinking, Oh, you're I, right. You're right. Either way, I got I got the I got the Qs winning it. Yeah. I mean, either way, I think my mistake. I think uh Florida State <laughs> still is a more challenging game than and and something for NC State fans that is still represents an emotional victory. You know, if you can get by Florida State, a team that tormented them forever, especially back to back Clemson and Florida State, Syracuse is gonna feel like and a major a letdown week before slot. Them. Yeah. It's a great spot to catch them. Yeah, it is bye week, and then if you're five and zero and you're hosting NC State, even if you're four and one, yeah, your fans are going to be especially if lit. you're undefeated in the ACC. If you've already beaten Louisville and Virginia, yeah, it's true. I mean, if things break right for Syracuse, we could be looking at a very different, you know, idea of this season than four most of us and, probably four and have. Two, four and two, the first six games. Yeah, you I with agree. Me? Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, then oh, at, I don't know. No. <laughs> I'm not with you. No, I'm at three and three. I'm then, at three. Then they're at Clemson Memorial Stadium. Uh, they play Clemson tough, but not, they're not going to beat Clemson. No. Four and four. Uh, four and four. Is that no? Four and three. Four and three for me. Yeah, I'm three and four. But yes, let's keep going. Home the Notre Dame. Could they pull an upset? No. I don't either. Four and four. At Pitt Heinz Field. It's not called Heinz anymore. It's called something else. Yeah. Unlikely here. I do want to ch- see what the recent history in this series is. I do believe this is like one of their most played games of all time. In fact, I think it's their most um, Syracuse pit old school. Uh, recently they have lost four in a row and nine of the last 10 against Pitt. And beyond that, geez, five, six, seven, uh, 16 of the last eight. 18 against Pitt. Oh, All right, I'm taking Pitt. Yeah. So that puts me at what? Four and five? Uh, four and five. Yeah, four and five, I yeah. think. Right? Um, They're home to Florida State. They almost beat Florida State. They lost by three in Tallahassee. Will Norvell even be coaching this game? This is a great this spot to catch him. Yeah. Let's give it to him. Is that like that it. puts you at that five? Puts me at five. That puts me at four. And then they have back to back road games to end the season, but in very unhostile environments. <laughs> That's true. At Wake Forest, they almost beat Wake. I'm taking Wake though. Yeah. Almost beat Wake last year and took them to at, overtime. At, at BC. What happened in that BC game? They though? Beat, didn't they beat BC? They last did year? beat BC. Man, maybe I need to maybe I need to figure this out. They're right at that five spot. I think. I think Vegas has it right. You know what? But I just can't see them winning all five of those to start it off. Can you? 
If they were to no, start, I had them going three and two. If they I'm were to saying start if they five beat Louisville or Purdue, the over is cashed. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna. Uh, I I kind of lean over. I, I kind of want to lean over too. Yeah. Just because I think with um, I got them five and seven, but I think if I lean, I think there's a better chance of them being six and six than four and eight. Six and six and four and eight, better chance. I think so too. Slightly better chance, especially if they can pull an upset on like Florida the NI State. The higher makes them very interesting. Especially they get Florida State late in the season too, where that could pay off. Uh, Sean Tucker and Garrett Schrader is a potent combination. And Price, with, Juwan Price or whatever. Right. Yeah. There's too many weapons. They'll find a way to get. I don't know. I wouldn't touch this one. <laughs> I wouldn't touch this one. I'm going over. Patty C's going. Over, I guess. There we go. Folks, I can't wait for Q's football. Subscribe to the college football experience. Remember also subscribe to the college basketball experience because we talk college basketball year round over there. We talk college football year round over here. Subscribe on YouTube. All right, youtube.com uh backslash the college experience. Do it. All right. Just get over there. Uh also check out the Discord channel. Come and sweat out some bets with us. We got the whole SGP crew in there, all of our fans. It's just a good old time talking, whatever. Even if you're not betting the game, it's just fun to get in there and talk some trash, say what you like, all that good stuff. Check out, check out that, check out all of our other podcasts, sports gambling podcast, already going through all 32 NFL teams, team by team, like the damn Avon lady. All right. (laughs) Uh, Look, um, what giants? What are you bills? Bills fans, giants fans, jets fans, Patriot fans. I don't know. Either way, you're going to want to check out the sports gambling podcast with stacking the money green and real money Kramer as they break down every single NFL team with a solo podcast for each and every team. Also, obviously that 24 hour draft draft day 2.0. I promise you will be better than the Cosner movie. All right. <laughs> uh, get the, uh, check out all of our other podcasts too. MLB gambling podcast. It's summer right now. What a great time to dive into some major league baseball. Uh, what else? CFL. We're close to Canada. CFL gambling podcast. All right. If you want to go represent the uh, Toronto Argonauts. All right. Check out the CFL gambling podcast. They're doing great work over there. The USFL gambling podcast, the, the fantasy football, your fantasy football drafts right around the corner the fantasy football gambling podcast. Just get, just check out sports gambling podcast, get the app. You'll have access to all of that good stuff. And uh, remember, Give us a follow on Twitter. I'm at the Colby D. Patty C's on Twitter at Patty C831. NC Nick's on Twitter at NC underscore N I C K. The college football experience is at TCE on SGPN. Give us a follow and look. If you go to iTunes and give us a five star review, which we would certainly appreciate, uh, t- take a screenshot of that. Show us that review, and I'm going to enter you in a raffle to win a gift card to the st- to the, our brand new SGPN merch store. We have some awesome college experience new shirts all different kinds of stuff. You got to check it out. It's absolutely fantastic. So do that once again at TCE on SGPN. All right, folks, we're both on the over with the orange. Let's go. This is the college football experience. Syracuse style. Get rid of the fucking dome. You better start thinking about yours and we out of here. Well, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> I don't care. The dinner's over! Coffee! You just don't turn it off! Coaching, our, we're, our, our coaching did a horrible job. The players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked in the second half. It sucked. It sucked.